insulation. It is R19, six and a half inch, or six and a quarter inch um, insulation. Now, R19 is not R19. They have a compression value. So when you buy R19, it expands to, or two by six walls expands to, according to, flip this over, it'll expand to 6.25 inches. Now your two by six wall is five and a half inches, which means you're gonna compress that three quarters of an inch. Um, when you do that, you actually, according to the manufacturer's website, you lose one R, so it's actually only R18. I looked at getting R30, which is nine inches, uh, typically used for attic insulation. Now when you squeeze that down into a five and a half inch wall, it reduces it down from an R30 to an R21. Um, R21, of course, is better than uh, R19, or excuse me, 18 once this is compressed, um, but the price difference was a bit more. So I could actually buy per roll, I could buy it cheaper, but the coverage was a lot less. So this will cover, this is 39.2 inches long, so I should be able to go up and down my walls three times on the full length wall. Whereas on the R30, I would only get two times going up and down a wall based off of its uh, length. So all in all, I'm gonna sacrifice a couple little bit of R value um, for cost savings. In the long run, of course, that's probably a stupid thing to do. Um, eventually it'll even out where it would have been better to just pay the extra, I think it was 30 cents um, a foot to get the additional R value. But just going, this is just going in our garage area. So it's just gonna be filling in all these bays here in the garage space. The ceiling will be uh, sprayed foam. And then we're gonna do sprayed foam up against the house. So that'll be sealed up a lot better. So this is a semi-conditioned space. I mean, it's, it's fully insulated, it'll be, it'll be fine. The doors are insulated, uh, garage doors are insulated, walls are insulated. You'll still have the R5 on the outside. So for a normal uh, wall, this will actually still be insulated pretty good. But for the inside of the actual living space where we're gonna be um, spending most of our time, that's gonna be conditioned a bit better. And with the, uh, with the spray foam, I have a higher R value there. But this is just to uh, get the garage done. I've gotta get around these doors done and sheeted within the next week before the garage door guy gets here and puts the uh, garage doors up. That is really heavy. That's one of the uh, inverters. I'm getting my solar equipment up here. So that stuff wasn't bad. Holy cow. I don't know how much that weighs, but it's a lot. I'm gonna eventually put a door here. I've got one more of those inverters to get up. But from about the bottom of there to that step is 82 inches. So just my rough opening for my door. So enough room for a 24 inch door there that would swing out. So it'd swing out and then you would step up into that loft area. So that's my plan. Just gotta put a header in up there. Move this two by four against there to hold the header. This two by four I took out will go here to support the header. And then I gotta notch that out and put something below to support it. And then I'll have a, a door access through there. But I got one more of those to do. And then I have 3,000 pounds worth of batteries. So those batteries are 125 pounds each. And I have 24 of them. And uh, now they was asking if that floor will support that. And the stud on end will support 3,000 pounds. And um, so, one stud would technically support all those batteries. And we have uh, the two by sixes, and then 
we uh, scabbed in a 2x4 stud on the side. So my floor uh, joists are nailed into the 2x6 and then we added a 2x4 to the side that it's resting on. So my batteries are going to line up along this wall. So there's no doubt in my mind that it'll support the weight. Um, this ceiling is going to have some flex to it. So my idea is that after it is foamed, it will come through and I will put um, uh, the pine across the top and stain it. So that uh, with the white cabinets, I look pretty sharp, I think. Just got back from our shop and picked up our batteries. These are uh, Full River batteries. They are 2.2 or 2 volt. Um, got 24 of them already together, be 48 volts together. Uh, I can't remember what the amp hours is, it's over a thousand something altogether. I think it's pretty high. Anyways, this is our battery bank. These suckers are 125 pounds a piece. Um, I built my own uh, bus bar to connect them up. Of course, they're disconnected now. I had to connect them up so I could charge them. So I put them uh, six in a row and then charge them that way to be 12 volts, just with a standard 12 volt charger. And they've held their charge really well over the last year. Um, to get these up into that second floor there, I'm not going to carry them up the stairs. What I'm going to do is I brought a, a pallet. So I'm going to take that pallet, drive around the back side, and then uh, load settlers up on the pallet and use the skid steer to raise them up almost to where they need to go in at. So walk over there and show that real quick. So I haven't built this wall yet because we're still bringing material through there. I still need to get a tub or shower stall through there. I'm going to bring the batteries from over in this area with the skid steer, lift them up right into that space there. Actually using the skid steer bucket may be a better option. I can go right through here, turn and go right in there is where the batteries are going. That'll save my back quite a bit of pain. batteries up here but I probably should have done one thing before I did that. So all these batteries are sitting up close to the wall but I still need to insulate and sheet that wall so now I've got to pull all the batteries out put the insulation in I got sheets down there bring them up and I get my sheets up it'll take at least three sheets to get all the way across and I should be hanging out some on this side. It's going to go up to about there. And I'm not going to worry about the top part for right now. But uh, it would have been a lot easier if I had done that before I put the batteries up here. Because i got to pull each one of those away from the wall so I can work. We're doing safety first here. So I'm gonna put on my mask, on my gloves. Insulation is nasty stuff. And um, this is a mask I've worn before, but it is better than nothing. Insulation is a lot better than it was uh, back in the 90s. And, 
80s, it was really bad fiberglass then. It's like crazy. This stuff still itches, but not near as bad as it did before. So what I got here is this is face, and I'm going to tear that facing off. This face insulation. I don't need the the faced. The uh, faced creates a vapor barrier. The zip siding is a vapor barrier. So if I were to put a vapor barrier, a insulation vapor barrier, and another vapor barrier, I've created a double vapor barrier. And what happens there is if you get any moisture in there, it does not go away. It gets stuck in between there, and it'll rot my sheeting out from behind. Um, will start to degrade, degrade my um, insulation. So it didn't have it in unfaced. So when I take this off, it's gonna peel the facing off, put it in, be good to go. Pretty quick. What I'm looking at now is trying to decide if I should finish up this top row or not. It's uh, just over 19 inches, and as most of us know, you can divide 8 feet up into uh, 19.2, something like that. So I can take an 8 footer and cut it down into uh, an exact amount of pieces, and we'll have a little waste to fill in this top part. I don't believe I need to get into that wall for anything. Um, there's not going to be electrical. All electrical is going to be surface mounted. Um, this area up here is going to be spray foamed. On the other side of here is my uh, um, soffit. So my conduit will come through somewhere in here with my leads from the uh, solar panels. So I don't think I really need to worry about uh, buttoning up this wall and having it affect anything. So I might as well go ahead and cut these pieces down and finish insulating or finish uh, sheath sheathing that wall. I know you're not supposed to have seams line up, but this isn't structural. It's a little bit structural. I went ahead and cut in for my door. So on this landing, this is going to be a two foot uh, door. So it'll open out open the uh, right left hand swing and you should be able to hop right up in there without any problem look like a normal door from the outside when you open it you have to take a step up um, once the door I'm going to have to finish out or figure out how to put a little piece of trim there as a nailer or something to nail the uh, drywall to on the inside of there it's not a huge gap it may not matter but I really don't want it to split right there um, as far as lining up my batteries I still plan on putting them against the wall, but I need to look through all the material I have and figure out what's going to fit where and how long my runs are and things like that. But um, pretty much it's all up here now except for the panels. Uh, racking should be in shipping and then um, hope I'll have all this 
set and ready to where once I get the panels up, I can start running power down to it. And then we'll have some power. I'll get some outlets run probably to the room down below. But that's about it for today. So I'll go get some more um, OSB tomorrow. I've got three more sheets right there, but that's not going to get me very far. So I'd say my uh, goal for tomorrow is to think about the layout a little bit more and then get working on these walls, get them insulated and, and sheeted. That will be uh, tomorrow's task. <laughs>